Once upon a time, there was slippers off. Get cozy. Definitely need to hydrate for this. I nearly just choked. Welcome back to another YouTuber video. I'm going to start a mini series within this series where every Thursday, we're going to go and take a trip down memory lane. I don't like to watch old vlogs or old videos of mine. It's just weird. It's just weird. I haven't watched these videos probably ever, unless I was sourcing a clip from a video for another video, which even then I would edit it down. I haven't like sat down and properly watched old videos, at least as long as I can remember. And this week we're starting right at the beginning of October, which was 2016. 2016, I was living in my first apartment by myself. It wasn't the first time I'd moved out, but it was the first time I'd lived alone. I liked this apartment. There's like a weird comforting feel when I think back on it. However, it's one of those comforting feelings that if anybody's experienced this before, um, um, this apartment reminds me a lot of struggling like severely with depression, but then also it's like a weird comforting thing to think back on. It was a cozy apartment. I liked where I lived. It's just like weird to think back on this time. And I remember that the whole reason why I even decided to do U Utober was because there was vlogmas at the time, but I was more of an like a fall lover than a Christmas lover. So I decided to start a full different YouTube series and just call it YouTober instead of October. Obviously that was like the play on words there, YouTube instead of October. And that really came from just, again, feeling really like down and out depressed. I feel like I was just like, my friends just was like, they were all doing different things with their lives and it was hard to like hang with people and get people together. So I just dove head first into the series and spent all my time on it. And that's how YouTober began. October 1st, 2016. How to gain self-esteem. As soon as you trust yourself, you will know how to live. Oh, that's a big yawn. Bentley! Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. For today's YouTuber video, I am going to be doing a coffee talk with you guys. So for today's coffee talk, it was a highly requested subject to cover. <laughs> Kind of like being confident in yourself and also how to not care what people think. I, I don't like. Okay, I know. I'm like immediately Bentley is making me happy even though my voice is like 10 octaves higher and I'm like, hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to another YouTuber video. Recently, I've been more critical of myself than I normally Always. am. Let me give you like a good analogy. We learned the other day that with writing, we go through a process of going through a creative mode and then a critical mode and then a creative mode and then a critical mode. As he was teaching us this, I kind of was watching being like, wow. That uh, this is when I was going to school part-time too. I went back to school to the college in Kingston part-time to do creative writing. To going into critical mode where all of a sudden I'm overanalyzing, I'm wondering if what I'm doing is a good idea. I'm conscious of what other people might be thinking of me and then I struggle and then I try and get back out of that mindset only to fall back into the creative and then back into the critical and I damn I didn't think little version me would be teaching older version me anything but this is so true I feel like this is still accurate and let me know in the comments if you agree with that do you feel like you yo-yo between feeling confident and creative and then feeling hypercritical and just almost like down and out on yourself and kind of yo-yoing back and forth between those feelings. I definitely can still relate to that. Make sure you know that we're not walking through life completely blinded by the way that we affect other people or, you know, just to be sure that we're constantly checking in with ourselves and feeling good about ourselves. But sometimes it can be way too easy to go overboard. Then all of a sudden I'm judging everything I do. I'm over questioning and over analyzing everything I do. I've suddenly lost all self-confidence. I love that this video is only seven minutes long. It's so weird in my head. I've created this pressure that videos need to be like 20 minutes plus. And it's so fun because I, that's exactly what the mini talks are this month on the Coffee Talk channel are like mini, yeah, short talks like this. You can't rely on anybody else to make you feel good and confident about yourself. It's mm. something that has to happen within. True. The best part is, is that, yeah, you don't have to rely on anyone else to fix this. You could fix this yourself right now. Like, True. Right at this minute. Oh, that wasn't day one. This actually is day one. Okay, I get it. I'm looking at the date that I uploaded it, not the date it went live. That's why I just got confused. The first one was actually fall essentials and obsessions. I love the thought that great things are coming no matter what you're going through. There's so much to look forward to. Damn, also true. Mm, good playlist, look at that phone. For today's video, we're gonna be talking about all things fall. Since if you guys don't know this already, I'm doing YouTuber. Look at the lashes, oh. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry. I just scrolled down and saw you should get an award for your fall videos. Peyton Carly, you wrote that seven years ago, but thank you. We have Bentley here with us today. He's so cute. You want to hear his floppy today? That's so cute. My favorite kind of music to listen to in the fall time is more like indie, folk, acoustic type songs. I would, would agree. I'll always wake up in the morning. The first thing I do is I hit play on my crisp leaves and lattes playlist, brew myself coffee, and light up one of my candles. I know that sounds so totally basic, but it is. I'm still that basic. So I'm gonna share with you guys my, some of my favorite. Like I can't, I don't even think I can get my voice to do that anymore. Mind you, I'm like 20, I'm 22 here. So my voice, it's been eight years, six years, seven years. Hold on, let me hear it for a second. Sense in terms of candles this year. If you guys have in terms of candles this year, like it's so, it's so, the octaves are so high. Let's see how alone I felt. Seven Many years of you guys may not know this, but I actually spend probably about 95% of my week completely alone. <laughs> oh, this is so wild to me because that was very, very much the truth in my life pretty much until I moved here. And now I get like 5% of my time <laughs> entirely alone. And I knew this was gonna happen. I knew that switch would happen one day. So it, I'm not gonna say one is better than the other because I know that I was really struggling with loneliness at this point in my life and for all those years of my life. Good to have a happy medium somewhere and everyone's medium will be different. Probably one of the highest requested things for me to get back into making these sorts of videos where I just kind of sit down and do like a coffee talk. With also, you guys. I do wanna make a note. At this point, I do remember my editing process and part of it was I used to have a package that would soften my hair and skin. This looks kind of cartoonish. I feel like this is actually a really good topic for me to talk about right now because it's very, very relevant to my own life. I work from home, I live alone, I eat alone, I make dinner alone, I go to the gym alone, I wake up alone, I go to sleep alone, I do a lot of things alone. Okay, I have Bentley, but still. This has been the longest period of time that I've ever been single. So while it has been like okay. a super good, good. eye-opening time of my life, to be honest with you guys, there have definitely been periods where I feel super lonely and isolated and alone. It has been evidently crucial. There is a massive, massive difference between being lonely and being alone. One of the best things in the world is sharing experiences with other people, but the thing is, sometimes, honestly, it's better to kind of be alone than to be surrounded by the wrong people. I'm like just, I'm kind of in awe right now because I'm realizing something and it's such a nuanced, complex, two things can be true. One being that I, I struggled with a lot of self-esteem during this phase of my life. I still struggle at times with my self-esteem, but it's so different. And the biggest difference that I'm noticing is that I can tell I'm not running through my head a million judgments of the different ways people could pick apart what I'm saying. And it's allowing me in a way to kind of just say what I'm saying and then move on to the next point. And something that I, I'm realizing somewhere along the way, I feel like I lost my spark. At this point, there was a level of nobody's going to stop me from doing this when I was on YouTube. It's kind of inspiring for me to watch in a weird way. Again, I was not expecting little, I was expecting to kind of be big sister me to little sister me here. And I do feel that in a sense, but in a lot of ways I'm watching her and I kind of envy her because I can just sense that she just doesn't care. She's going to just do what she wants to do, create what she wants to create, say what she wants to say. I did not read comments like I was terrible if you scroll down and you actually read through these comments you'll never rarely ever see me responding to any like I don't see any of my own responses to any of these comments and it was because I would just create post move on to the next thing and when I didn't read comments it made it so that I was never actually taking in negative comments and I let all comments go free reign on old videos and then at some point, I think it was partly because YouTube started recommending to like interact with your fans, which obviously you should, you should interact with your viewers and interact with the community that you're creating. But because of that, I obviously started to read a lot more negative comments and it got to me. You can be as thick skinned as you like, but if you read negative comments and even if you're able to brush them off, they kind of do get stuck somewhere deep inside your subconscious a little bit. Like show me somebody that can brush that off. I kind of miss this mindset that I used to have with YouTube and I'm kind of I'm inspired by it I wasn't gonna I'm not gonna say it was like the healthiest time in my life but there was a part of me here where I just did not care I was gonna do it and I was fully believing in myself and now I feel like I've let too many opinions kind of infiltrate my my 
sense of value on the internet. It's so wild. I'm learning a lot from watching this. It's crazy to me because again, too, like these are not really vlogs. These are all very much coffee talk style videos. The other really interesting thing that I'm noticing too is that a lot of these videos aren't even really fall related. Time you enjoy wasted is not wasted time. You end up just watching Vampire Diaries and then you wake up the next day and then you're like, oh, I still have to do this. Maybe I'll push it off one more day. Then you watch more Vampire Diaries. Then all of a sudden a week's gone by and yeah, you've made it through three seasons of the show, but you got nothing else done. I love that I was watching Vampire Diaries at this point. I just did a member video where it was like, pick a show that makes you think of fall. And I immediately said Vampire Diaries. So I love that. <laughs> this is like the OG YouTube song. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. This is crazy. Like I was just expecting each video to be like a vlog, like going to the market and such, and it's not. All right, we have a Vegas vlog. Let's see here. Six minutes long. Okay, be ambitious, get shit done, do well, live well, eat well, keep your priorities straight, your mind right, and your head up. That's what's up. Probably not gonna be able to include this song, but. I won't make it easy for you now. People seemed to really enjoy the coffee talk style videos over vlogs, which is so opposite as to what content gets requested most now. <sighs> Currently in Vegas. This pimple on my lip showed up on the plane. Not cool at all. So I'm actually in Vegas for the iHeartRadio Music Festival, which is super, super exciting. I'm gonna have to get ready soon. I'm waiting for my manager to show up. Katie, we are going to party like it's, I was gonna say 1999, but to be honest, I was five. So, so yeah, we're here to party. Well, I say we're here to party, but like partying for me is like four drinks and then coming back to the hotel with a pizza, but I would be okay with that. That's still partying to me. Four drinks and then going back to a hotel for pizza would be a rager for me. And we have Vegas. And I don't really break too easily, but I'm worth it. So this part, this little montage where I'm like, oh, look at me having fun in the hotel room. I broke up in the wine, watched Dr. Phil and was like kind of sad laying in that bed. Actually, even after when I, this is called Life Chats in Vegas and everybody left before I did because a lot of people that I used to go on these trips with were American and I was like the only Canadian. And I remember there was this guy who flew us all out there for this trip. Like he was one of the like, I'm gonna name this wrong, but like a stakeholder or a CEO or something along those lines. And he was like very involved with the relationships going on here. And I remember he insisted on driving me personally to the airport and I was physically so uncomfortable. And he was not, like he never did anything inappropriate, but I just got an icky vibe. And I remember him taking me to the airport and him being like, oh, we have lots of time. Let's stop at a cafe. And again, I was so uncomfortable when we were sitting at the cafe, he called out my attitude and he was like, you know, like if you were to like warm up a little bit, like I'd be able to like bring you on more trips and bring you on more like events and things like this. And he liked a lot of the other people that would really like warm up to this guy. He was filthy, filthy rich. And he was like an older man. And I remember just being so uncomfortable. I don't fully remember how the conversation went, but I just do remember him calling out my attitude because when I, when I was like, I'm just going to take an Uber to the, to the airport, like it's totally fine or a taxi, whatever it was at the time. And he insisted at the front and he was like, no, 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 I'll drive you. I'm going to drive you. I'll pick you up at this time at the hotel. And thinking back on that now, it's so messed up because first of all, I should have just been able to taxi, but I felt bad because he was the reason why I was able to go on this trip. Like he paid for us all to go one and two. It's just weird. Like again, thinking about how he was like, Oh, like maybe if you had like a warmer attitude, like you'd be able to go to more events like this kind of thing. And like, that's so, so inappropriate now. I forgot about this. And anyway, when everybody also first left and I was waiting for the creepy dude to pick me up and I was in a sour mood about it, I had a full breakdown and I remember getting in the tub in this hotel and just being so sad. I had like a bubble bath and just cried. Let's just skip to the live chats. Okay, update. I'm still in Vegas. Um, everybody's gone, which is like super kind of depressing if I'm being honest with you. Uh, Do you see the skin smoother? Uh, my flight isn't until midnight tonight. So right now I have the hotel room until six. So I'm planning on just kind of chilling. Last night and the night before was super fun. And I don't really break too easily, but I'm worth it. Everyone I met was so cool. I'm so, 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 so grateful for YouTube. And I'm so grateful for you guys. And you, like, it's honestly, it's so weird, but like maybe. 
I know I'm being honest, but that didn't sell me. You know, they're like, I'm so, so, so grateful for you guys so that I can be on this trip. Like, I remember getting so uncomfortable about this because I would go on these trips and I knew that it was literally because I had an audience that I was even able to go on trips like this. But it's so weird to say that to a camera to just be like, oh, person watching me in your bedroom or living room, like because of you, I'm here. And there's a part of it that if I'm just not going to filter myself here, there's a part of me, a part of it that's uncomfortable because you're like, oh, thanks for basically sending me to Vegas for watching my videos while you're still in your room watching me now in Vegas, party it up and do things that most people won't get a chance to do. And that is a level of this influencing like era of especially when I was at my peak and going to a lot of events and things like this where it just it made me so uncomfortable because I wasn't sure how to be relatable in these scenarios I wanted to live it up and enjoy it and part of me wishes if I did I don't have regret but if I could go back I would let myself enjoy it more because it's such a once in a lifetime experience but it's in the vlogging process and the sharing the experience where I'd get uncomfortable because I'd realize like yes thank you for watching because of you watching I'm able to do this but it also it, it creates a divide where these experiences aren't given to the general public and the person that started watching me in their bedroom while I was started starting in my bedroom just being a relatable one-to-one -one person it changes things yeah it was just a different time but that's why I think I'm like struggling to sell this or I'm like I'm so thankful for YouTube that I can do things like this and then I would feel guilty because I'm on this trip and I'm a very introverted person and so I would get so stimulated because I'm being so social and I'm drinking which I never have loved drinking and when I drink and I get anxiety and like panic attacks and such especially at this time and then I feel like I would just sit the next day and think about it so much and be like, oh, why did I say that? Why did I do that? Why was I acting so weird? Why was I upset? Why was it, even when I was in a bad mood to that dude that drove me to the airport, so. Videos in my bedroom and talking to you guys is like one of the only places I feel like I belong. And then I come to events and stuff and it's just a whole nother level. And it's like, I feel, I don't know if it's my social anxiety. I don't know if it's my, just maybe I need to work on my self-confidence in terms of like, putting myself out there when I meet people that do this, similar things. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's just like, yeah, that's pretty much what I just said. It's like imposter syndrome in a sense too. Cause I'm like too, you would go on these events and you'd meet other YouTubers and they were acting like they belonged there. And I remember acting like I was like, I needed to like kiss everybody's feet in order to just be like, okay with taking up space there. Did not have a whole lot to do with this. This had a lot, has a lot more to do with my family history, but we are not cracking that egg today. It's just like, you feel like you're like a puzzle piece that just doesn't belong to any sort of puzzle. You're just like a piece floating around trying to figure out where the hell you fit. Um, I get that. I feel that even though it might seem like I'm super sure of myself and I'm super confident and self-aware, I still feel so unsure of where I fit in on this earth. I was like super deep that we just got on a really, really deep level. There. <laughs> it wasn't even that deep. I mean, it was deep, but like, I just feel like we've gone so much deeper in the years. I barely said anything, but yeah, it's true. And I love that I'm like showing up very authentically. Eyelash glue still on my eyes. Lips just chapped as hell. No eyebrows drawn in. Love that. Okay. What do we, what do we got next? Camera died, but let's end it off with a good old, good old morning routine. I feel like this is a good one to end it off too, just to see how different life is now and my morning routine is now. Okay. <laughs> Immediately, the like coffee pan where I'm over like standing over a mat. I just took my coffee, went outside and randomly did that shot just for the B-roll. That had nothing to do with my actual morning routine. I think that I'm going to hiding. I'm going nowhere, by the way, in that clip where I'm leaving the house. I just told you in that other video, I spend all my time at home and alone. And it's definitely not going to the gym. That's not an outfit for the gym. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Instead of just sharing with you guys my morning routine, I'm also gonna share with you guys five hacks for the morning time to make sure you have a really productive day and you know that you're in a <laughs> The charisma. You're in a really, really good mood. I like to sleep with all of my windows open in the fall time because the air outside is just so crisp and cool. But it's also got such Fox. a calming effect on me. Or now I don't go to work or school on a day-to-day -day basis. I just but told you. But if you do, I, just... I would recommend, yeah. you know, making your lunch. Um, something I do like to do at nighttime, though, is set out my outfit for the following day. It just makes it so much easier. Starting the day off with, like, that kind of music and you know, surfing the web and just kind of like chilling out by myself for even just like 45 minutes and honestly- <laughs> Just, just 45 minutes. Oh, I'm lucky to get like five minutes. If you guys want to see my morning routine, then just keep watching. Okay, again, this clip, I don't even think that's Kingston. 
I think that's just like a, I just sourced that from somewhere. Same with this. These are not my clips. We could be as one and we'll escape. We could run away. We don't gotta stay. I can feel it, it burns inside. So what I used to do for these clips, because obviously I'm not actually just waking up. I would wake up, grab my camera, hit record and get back into bed. But I would go into the blankets and I would be like, Ee! I would make noises like that. And Bentley would get so confused and then try and attack me and make sure I'm okay. So that's why he's doing that. Take away the pain, we can go insane. I can feel that it burns inside. We can run away, we don't gotta stay. I can and yes, I would, I would do it like at least five times in a row, I would do the whole set. So I would do that whole routine, including this stretch from one angle, move it, do the whole thing again, move it, do the whole thing again. And that's how I'm getting those. Once upon a time, there was a player in every corner doing tricks for a dime. All the streets were cold. Again, go go watch the OG because the music in this is so nice. He had his eyes and all the bright shining silver and gold. Oh, oh, oh. as time went by so slowly, if only he could show me silver. That was the first bed I ever bought myself. It felt like such a big purchase. That was like, yeah, that probably was my first ever big purchase. He didn't need no reason more than the so pleasing, bright, shining, silver. I still have that mug. So the only thing that's different so far is I don't have, I can't make my bed. I immediately wake up and do go make a coffee. But yeah, I don't make my bed first thing. More than meets the eye. Your luck is turning. Oh, I did have somewhere to sit. Okay. Part of me thinks that maybe I was just doing this for the video. I don't doubt that I'd sometimes sit outside with my coffee, but I probably sat on my couch more often. And you don't even want to know why. Oh, okay. It was for Bentley. There we go. I was waiting for Bentley. You had your eyes and all the bright shining silver. Those agendas, I used to love those. I don't even remember what the brand name is anymore. Oh, this time went by so slowly. If only you could show me silver and gold. Oh. All of the post it notes you see to the left, that was every single video and where they were in the train of videos being uploaded. Like which ones were filmed, which ones were being edited, which ones still need to go live, whatever. The ones that are on the computer are the ones that I was currently editing. And then like I would move them into a book when they were finished. That was like my streamline of events to keep myself organized. Oh, you didn't need no reason more than the oh so pleasing bright shining silver some pumpkin spice oatmeal. I love this because we do this in this YouTuber year. We're gonna be making pumpkin spice oatmeal. I love that. Okay, so what's blowing my mind so far is that my routine is probably very similar. The only thing is it's just like with a baby now. Like I do breakfast, but I do breakfast with my baby. And then as soon as he goes down for a nap or usually the hour before his nap, I'll get ready and he'll play or be with his dad, either or. I've had that Buddha for this long. I'm sorry, it's cute, but like I was going nowhere. I definitely came back inside, took the booties off, took the hat off, sat down and filmed that intro.
Also, no pictures in the picture frames. That makes me kind of sad. Uh, it was cute. I was not expecting this to go the way it did. I definitely thought taking a trip back to 2016 was going to be more... I don't know. I don't even know what I was really expecting. I thought I was going to cringe more or laugh more, but I feel like I'm just like... I don't know. I admire her hustle. Next Thursday, if you tune back in, we're going to do 2017. And then obviously each Thursday after that, we'll do 2018, 2019. And that was the first one. That was the first year YouTuber ever started. I know a lot of people always tell me this was the year that they found my content. Like, and it was literally through doing YouTuber 2016. So it's really cool to know if you've seen any of those videos, let me know. Let me know what you guys are doing in 2016. And I will hang out with you guys all hopefully tomorrow. And if not, then just in the next fall vlog. Bye everyone. I think that I'm going to hiding somewhere by a gate it's dark.